Hello, so this is not going to be a ta-da video. We're not going to invent anything new today. It's going to be more of a building block video because I know it's kind of obvious, but whenever any of us is brainstorming for a new project, we tend to reuse components and techniques that we are already very familiar with, like Arduinos, duct tape, ball bearings, 3D printing, Vegemite, glue guns, and so on. But as the saying goes, when your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a snail. So the goal of the next few minutes is just to show you a new building block that maybe you could add to your own brainstorming toolbox. So suppose you want to build a new gizmo and you need a motor to move some small stuff around during the day. Okay, uh, concrete example. Okay, so let's do your typical Monday afternoon kind of project. Suppose you're back in the office and you'd like to know how much time is left until Friday evening. So one way to do that would be simply to build some sort of visual display of how far along we are on the work week. For example, something small enough so that you could put it on a corner of your desk. It does look like a fairly straightforward project. There are so many different ways we could build this and you are probably already teeming with ideas. So quickly, let's do an elevator ride brainstorming session. Try to picture it. How would you build it? You have five seconds. Okay, all that thought. So for most of us, the Pavlov reflex is going to look a bit like this. You know it's gonna work in a Rube Goldberg kind of way, but deep down it does feel maybe just a tiny bit of a kill, doesn't it? So here is the building block I was talking about. It's a quartz clock movement. But basically the entrails of a mechanical clock. Now the the clock mechanism that you are probably most familiar with is the ticking kind, the one that goes... Yeah, it's basically a medieval torture instrument. Luckily, there is now an almost completely silent version of that mechanism. The Amazon name for it is the non-ticking or continuous sweep clock movement. That is the only one we should ever be talking about. So basically, this is a small motor with all the driving electronics, a time reference, and it even has its own power source, and a reduction gear set with three different outputs, the axis for the hours, minutes, and seconds. It's not very powerful, but the really cool thing about it is that it is actually low power enough that it can run continuously for several months on a single AA battery. Now, you don't really need to know what's inside the black box to use it, but if you're really curious, and purely for the Wikipedia fun of it, Diode Gone Wild, another YouTube channel, made a really instructive video in which he is going all Dexter on one of these clock movements. Now it should open, and that's it. I might be paraphrasing a bit, but it seems like the main conclusion of that video is that it is not a tiny hamster running inside a wheel. So orientation does not matter. We can put it upside down, we can even lay it flat. But um, it should still work. And uh, yes, it should even work in space. So uh, the stuff that you are probably the most interested in right now is how powerful are these clock mechanisms? How much torque are we actually talking about? My favorite unit is gram force centimeters. Suppose we have a clock motor with just one hand and tiny little mass attached to the extremity of that hand. Now, if the motor can make a full rotation, then it can provide a torque that is equal to the weight of that little mass in grams multiplied by its distance to the center of the clock in centimeters. So just to get an order of magnitude, I did some measurements with the few clock movements that I have. 
So if we only use the minutes axis, then the maximum possible torque from that axis is about 35 gram force centimeters. One way to allow for heavier weights or longer hands would be to use counterweights. Another way would be to slow down the rotation with a pair of geared wheels. And in this case, the second gear would be slower, but it would also provide more torque. And that is actually exactly what's happening with the hours axis. A bunch of gears is connected to the minutes axis and is slowing it down by a factor 12 to create the hours axis. So I did again the same type of measurements, but this time using only the hours axis. And the torque available on that axis is 250 gram force centimeters. Now, if we want to use both the minutes and the hours axis at the same time, then to figure out how much torque is available on each axis, the easiest is probably just to look at the percentage of the maximum torque on each axis. So, for example, we could use 80% on the minutes axis and 20% on the hours axis. Oh, and the axis for the seconds. This one is very, very weak and really tricky to measure. But it seems that it can provide up to about 1 gram force centimeters if it is used alone. So, by far, the easiest way to attach anything to one of the clock axes is simply to reuse the original hands that you got with that clock. So for example, you could just cut the branches of the hands and glue some 3D printed gear directly on top of the hub. Or you could also directly tape a cardboard cutout directly on the clock hand. And that's it. Really, the main idea of this video was just to get you a bit more acquainted with these clock movements. So that maybe um, they will tend to pop up a bit more naturally during your next brainstormings and perhaps even give you a few additional options. Right, um, quickly, let's get back to our initial brainstorming session. Just think about it for another five seconds. Do you have any potentially new ideas?